There you go. Uh, I'm an American who was born in Hong Kong. Uh, for the last decade, I worked mainly in Washington, D.C., doing stuff for the federal government. Uh, my expertise is in uh, foreign languages. So you're going to do this presentation in Dutch? <laughs> uh, not uh, European languages, because no one can, you know. No, you guys are not terrorists. That's the thing. <laughs> anyway, I've been programming in PHP since PHP 3, which is something like uh, 1998 or so. Uh, the a previous open source project I did is Apache, which is a, a software that maybe you guys have never heard of. And I'm currently living in Poland. is uh, basically Internet Explorer combined with Apache so that you could create a desktop application using PHP or any other kinds of server-side language. It's sort of useful for demo purpose. Like you want to demo um, a website and you, know, you want to make sure that it works. Uh, anyway, I'll start uh, on PHP for performance. Uh, just a, a, a few things about PHP performance. Um, in a typical PHP application, co uh, execution speed doesn't really matter all that much. When on a modern computer, PHP is fast enough for the most part. Uh, let's say we have a script that takes 10 milliseconds, and then we somehow managed it, managed to make it run 10 times faster. Percentage-wise, that's a massive improvement. But in absolute terms, 9 milliseconds it's a blink of an eye. Doesn't really matter all that much. And the internet and database server has, uh, they have latency much greater than that. Uh, if you're experiencing uh, performance issues on your web application, vanish, varnish is probably the answer. OK. On some rare occasions, though, execution speed can be a make and break issue. This happens sometimes when you're pushing the envelope, doing things that you typically don't do in PHP. That means there's no built-in function you can call. And you have to implement the algorithm in PHP itself. And that can be agonizingly slow. PHP is a high-level dynamic language. It's not designed to do low-level stuff. The overhead of a dynamic language starts to become really apparent at around, you know, when you're doing something that takes over one million operations. Uh, you might end up with a script that takes five, 10 seconds to finish. And in most cases, that's just too slow. And uh, here's one scenario. Uh, let, oh, let me flip the page. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's say for some reason your application needs to calculate the SHA-3 signature of files. SHA-3 is relatively new. Uh, if you have not heard of it, it's called KESAC. Oh. I don't know the actual pronunciation. I think it's in Czech. Uh, OK, so, and you don't have M hash, or the algorithm isn't present in the library, so you have to implement the algorithm itself in PHP. And here are some of the, some of the problems you run into. For every byte, you have to call the ordinal function to get the actual value, because otherwise, it's going to be a one character string. And there is no 64-bit integer in a 32-bit environment. Another problem is that integers get promoted to floating points when an overflow occurs. And that is something that you don't want to happen in this case. And table lookup is really slow in PHP compared to C. For 
a file that is one megabyte, we are talk we were looking at 10 million or so operations. And the second scenario uh, is you want to make the background of an image transparent. So for every pixel, you have to call image color add to get the value of the pixel. And then you have to call image set pixel to set the value if you change it. Uh, if, if you have an image that's 800 times 600, that's <coughs> around half a million pixels. And you know that's a lot of function calls. And it's going to be pretty slow. And here's where QB comes in. It's a PHP extension that makes specific function run a lot faster, or at least at reasonable speed. Everything else, it just leave alone so that you don't run into compatibility issues. It's not trying to accelerate everything. It's just that part of your application that needs you know, to be faster. And the way it works is mainly by removing the dynamic nature of PHP. Uh, this, uh, variables can no longer change type during execution, and the type has to be declared in advance. So a lot of the performance gain comes from static typing. And there's also no associative arrays or objects. Uh, the extension is designed for to accelerate code that does a lot of calculations and nothing else. It's not a general purpose uh, solution. Basically, uh, oh, and for that purpose, it provides functions that allow you to do things like dot, taking dot product and doing matrix multiplication and also stuff stuff like uh, bilinear interpolation. Uh, and the extension also allows you to access individual pixels in an image as though it's an array of floating points. That makes it a lot easier to make changes to individual pixels. And a useful analogy here is the relationship between a CPU and a GPU in a computer. A CPU is designed to do general purpose stuff, whereas a GPU is just designed for uh, number crunching. Okay. And how does it work? Uh, okay, so given a PHP function, a really simple one, uh, you have to provide a dot comment section with the type declarations. Uh, in this example, you see that uh, there are two parameters here, and they are both integers of, uh, they're both 32-bit integers, and the function also returns a 32-bit integer. And the, the add engine tag here tells the extension that you want it to handle the function. Without it, then you know the function will be ignored, and it will just be uh, handled normally. Uh, the function, along with the type information here, is fed into the compiler, which translates it, translates the Zen opcodes uh, into its own QB opcodes, and then n now when you call the function, instead of uh, it being handled by the same virtual machine, it gets redirected to the VB uh, virtual machine. And by doing that, uh, we get a pretty big, on this chart, I'm showing the time it takes to run a function taken from the computer language shootout website. Uh, have you guys heard of this website? Uh, it's just what one function. This particular function does uh, a lot of integer calculations, like millions and millions of them. Uh, in standard PHP, it takes almost 24 seconds to finish. Uh, whereas with QB, uh, it handles it in two and a half seconds or so. And the second example is an implementation of the CLC32 algorithm. 
uh, in straight PHP, it takes more than five seconds to calculate the checksum of a 10 meg file. Uh, QB improves improvement, it, it improves performance by more than a factor of 10. In this case, that looks impressive until you look at the bottom bar here. That's the native function. That's the function that's built into PHP. Uh, so, you know, I'm not really working magics or miracles here. Uh, it's still bytecode interpretations, and bytecode interpretation is inherently slow. But still, it's better. And worthwhile. <laughs> OK, let me flip to the next page. <clears throat> OK. OK, so for a situation where you want to squeeze out as much performance as possible, QB gives you the option to compile functions into native code. Uh, the capability is actually not built into the extension itself. Uh, what the extension does is it generates uh, source code in the C language, and then it hands it off to a C compiler, an external C compiler, which is GCC on Linux or the Mac uh, on Windows is uh, Visual Studio. And then the compiler produces an object file, which gets uh, dynamically linked into PHP. Uh, the process is fairly quick. Uh, it's usually less than half a second, and faster than that in most cases. And only it only needs to happen uh, when there's a change in the code. OK, the performance gain here is quite large uh, down here, 4.41 4 4 second compared to two seconds. So it's, uh, let's see, it's almost six times faster. Let me jump to the next slide. Uh, for the second example, it's seven times faster. It's almost as fast as the native function here, 0 0.06 compared to 0 0.05. Uh, compared to what you can do, uh, I mean, or how long it takes in standard PHP, uh, is quite a massive jump. Uh, now, I'm going to show you some examples that are more that, that are less artificial. Um, uh, all of them involve uh, involve uh, image processing. That's an area uh, that PHP is really weak at. Uh, here's what I was talking about before. We move in the background from an image. And the next example is a free transform of an image. Um, you know, if you have used Photoshop before, you know how you can change the four corner uh, to deform the picture. And this example is uh, it's a simple reflection effect. Uh, and then this one, okay. Oh, there's an output of a very simple ray tracer. It's just a bunch of shiny balls. Uh, it's not really useful, but it's kind of neat. Uh, okay. And the next one, uh, what we see here is what's called the thruster effect. I think it, the name is, uh, is Dutch. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Thruster. thruster. Yeah, so you see, you know, you have a iPad, inside an iPad, inside an iPad, and so forth. Uh, the algorithm is computationally fairly intensive. Uh, if you look down here, it took uh, one and a half second in interpretation mode to generate a 600, 680 by 680 picture. Uh, if you compile it, then it's uh, over half a second. It's still slow, but better than, I don't know, probably impossible to do in, in regular PHP. Uh, OK, I'm going to continue. Can I just take a sip of beer, if you don't mind? I'm thirsty. One special feature of QB is uh, importing of 
pixel bender filters. Uh, are there um, any Flash developers here? No? No Flash developer? Zero? Oh, OK. Gee. Tough crowd. OK. So uh, Pixel Bender is a technology created by Adobe. It's available in Flash 10 and above. Uh, it gives you the ability to do uh, various special effects in real time. It's pretty cool. Too bad there are no Flash developers here. We can tell you about it. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, there are many existing filters you can download off the internet. Uh, and pixel benders potentially could be very useful uh, in this case if you use it in combination with QB because it gives you a way to perform the same operation on the client side as well as on the server side, even though the client side has to be equipped with Flash, obviously. Uh, everyone got Flash. <laughs> Okay, that's, here's one example of uh, the kind of things that you can do using uh, Pixel Bender and Flash uh, and QB. Uh, so QB uh, both, both, both. See, it allows you to, you can do it on the browser side and also on the server side. That's the neat part. So, uh, but the image here is created in QB. Uh, the code itself, I downloaded it. Uh, from off Adobe. They, they have a, uh, what's called the Pixel Bender Gallery, and a lot of people upload the code there, and I just downloaded this one. And this one just produces, makes it look sort of metallic. This is the starting image, and this is the finished image, uh, and it produces it uh, fairly quickly. And the next one, oh, Oop, did I just skip? Uh, it's a very simple vintage photo effect. Uh, some of you might recognize who, who that person is. Uh, uh, this is the Obama poster effect. I don't know if it's still popular here. It, I, I don't think it ever was. <laughs> uh, OK, the next one uh, is a, just a circle pattern effect. It's, it's kind of cute. Uh, this is, you know, it makes the picture look like a pencil drawing. Uh, and I have the, the, the execution time down here. It, if you, in interpretation mode, is 0.3 second. Uh, if you compile it into native code, then it's uh, less than a tenth of a second. But the interpretation is still in QB, right? Yes, it, it's done in QB. Uh, and you don't need the compiler. Uh, if you want to switch on uh, native code, then you have to have a compiler uh, installed. And there's, of course, um, some security issues related to that. Uh, do you really trust QB enough to allow it to <laughs> execute arbitrary code? Um, so that, that's the reason why uh, there are two options. You know, if you are in control, of your server, then you know what you're putting on there. So you could compile the stuff into native code, and there's no issue. But if you don't trust your employees <laughs> or clients, uh, then you might just want to stick with uh, interpretation. And this is a wave effect, uh, like a water drop here, and wave spreads out. Um, not Uh, this this is Pixel Bender, but you can write you can write it in PHP as well. Uh, I just these are just examples that I downloaded off the internet. Okay. Um, and but this the, these effects you can you have like uh, uh, times. Yeah. Like, and these you tested all this in. Yes. PHP, and it's with uh, Pixel Bender code. Which uh, yes. And usually, Pixel Bender code tends to be a bit slower because it's not as optimized. But it's the same engine, so it can be faster, actually, if you do it in uh, PHP. So what language is that in Pixel Bender code? Uh, it's a language that sort of resembles uh, the shader language used in OpenGL. Uh, you pass that to 
you have to compile that first uh, using the tool provided by Adobe. It's a, uh, it gets compiled to, into a, a PBJ file, and that is also compatible with the Flash player. So you can have the same effect in Flash. And it, and it runs a lot faster in Flash. It can do it in real time. So let's say you have a video here instead of just, just an image. It will actually have the effect. And like the video would be playing at you know, a regular frame rate, and then you will have the effect there. It's, but you know, in QB, it, it does not run that fast. If you look at the time here, uh, yeah. it's because I'm not using, utilizing multiple cores. I'm only using a single core. So I'm not as good as a pixel bender on the client side. But that might change in the future. And here's a hexagon effect. For use what? Can QB use the GPU? Not at the moment. It's something I'm thinking about. Uh, I w was thinking about it, but most servers are not equipped with a GPU. So, um, and it's a Chikuli effect. Don't really know what it means, but it's sort of. Uh, or what it does. <laughs> Uh, that's like this little wiggly thing. Uh, the ASCII effect. Uh, and I don't know what the heck this is, but it looks, <laughs> it looks kind of nice. Has something to do with complex numbers. Yeah. Okay, and these effects can be applied to videos. Uh, and thanks to uh, and the extension called AV, which I wrote myself. And basically, it's just a binding to uh, the uh, FFmpeg, FFmpeg uh, library. Uh, unlike the old one, there's, there's another uh, PHP extension called uh, FFmpeg. Uh, unlike the old one, uh, this new one also encode video along with the ability to decode it. Uh, what it means is that you could grab like a video frame from a video, do something with it, and put it into a new video. And the example for the example of the switch into Chrome. I would call my dad. Do you know this movie? Yeah. So it's using the the code for the reflection that I did earlier. Tell me everything's going to be OK. Everything's going to be OK. OK, status uh, of the project. Uh, currently, it's 1.3. So it's still relatively new, uh, meaning that it could still be buggy. But I'm working on it. Uh, version 1.4 is coming out pretty soon. Uh, it works pretty much in every version of uh, PHP 5. I tried to do PHP 5.0, but uh, just, I mean, 5.1 is already, it's just too hard to do. <laughs> I don't think anyone is using PHP 5.0 anyway. I hope not. <laughs> uh, uh, and on operation systems, uh, all three major operation st systems are supported. Um, I don't have Windows, 64-bit uh, Windows yet, um, mainly because I couldn't figure out how Windows 8 works. Um, but <laughs> as soon as I figure it out, uh, <laughs> as soon as I figure that out, um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll get it to, to work. And here is my contact information. And this is the end of it. And a, a, a question? Are you working alone on the project? Yes, currently. I would love to have some help. Uh, no, nothing outside beyond what I'm doing. No. Yeah. So there are some security sacrifices you have to take by using this or commercial code. 
Uh, potentially, yes. Yeah. Yes. Why did you decide on parsing the doc logs for uh, adding new types using the extension instead of implementing extra uh, native types in the PHP, which can perform those calculations? Uh, because that saves me from having to parse the source code. Right now, it's basically utilizing uh, the, the compiler that's built into PHP. So instead of parsing the actual code, I'm parsing the opcode. Ah, that makes it a lot easier, and that makes it keep the extension a lot smaller. The extension, the size of the extension itself is less than one megabyte, and it does a lot of stuff. Um, so I, th I think that's sort of important, and it also keeps it from diverging too much from what the PHP language is, because like everything that you know, works in QB has to compile through the PHP compiler first. Like every, it has to be legal PHP code. Okay. Uh, is it possible to compile uh, on a development machine and then deploy it to a server? Uh, extensions or, or your code? Uh, meaning that you want the native code? Yes, yes. So, um, it's possible, but potentially tricky. Okay. Yeah. Basically, it has. I mean, it util, utilizes a cache and it just looks it up in a directory, uh, based on it calculates like a checksum of the opcode and then it looks for a file of a particular name. So you could potentially upload a file into the cache, and then, and then it will work. Uh, it's more more trouble than just letting it w run automatically, but yeah, it helps with the security issue. But it compiles automatically then? Yeah. It, when it well, basically, it, it calculates a checksum uh, of the opcode. And if it notices that there is no file there, it's a very simple mechanism. It calculates the CLC, 30, uh, CLC 64, actually. And then it creates a file name from that. And it looks in the cache directory to see if the file exists. If the file is not there, then it compiles it. If it's, the file is there, then it loads it. Yes. Have you thought about using other compilers uh, such as uh, GCC, like LDDM and Splunk? Uh, I thought about uh, integrating it, uh, like LLVM, but that means making the extension, extension a lot bigger. And given that the action does not happen all that often, uh, because you don't change your code all that often, it's, I think it's better to just put it in an external, external program. And I've tried um, compiling it using uh, L, uh, no, what's it called? The Apple compiler, CLang, mm -hmm. and it works. Okay. Any other question? Yes. Yes. Uh, you make a PHP script, you add the doc log, and uh, your library uh, automatically detects that PHP code? Yeah, uh, well, basically, no, you have to call a function, and then it will compile it. Uh, I, I skipped that part because the images are cooler. <laughs> But it's, uh, basically, yeah, you have to trigger the action of the compilation. It doesn't happen automatically. Uh, how do you do that? Huh? How do you do that? Uh, you call a function called QB compile uh, somewhere at the bottom of your code. Yeah, so it doesn't happen uh, just automatically. You sort of have to trigger it. There has to be a trigger point. It scans through all functions, yeah. and it looks through the dot comment section, looking for that add engine tag. If it's there, then it compiles it. If it's not, then the function is ignored. And it's, is it part of the opcode that has already been compiled in the dev engine? Yes. And it recognizes all uh, structures and uh, things that PHP um, okay. Well, if, if it doesn't, it will complain. Uh, there are things that it cannot do, like exceptions, for example. You cannot fall in ex exception, and then it will just say, nope, it doesn't handle exceptions. Uh, or if you access 
um, yeah, there are features that are not supported in order to make it run faster. Uh, but like the objects. In the objects, yeah. I mean, you can use the syntax of objects, yeah. uh, except it's interpreted in a different way. Basically, it assumes that all the elements in the objects are of the same type. So more like um, like a behaves more like a vector than than an object. Uh, so you can use the syntax, but yeah, it's sort of hard to explain. But yeah. But inside the function, you would could not, um, for example, implicitly uh, cast a string to an integer. No, no, that so is like not supported. Uh, string to integer uh, that does not happen at all. Although it doesn't complain, it will just assume that the string is uh, a binary integer. Okay. Yeah, meaning that it, uh, it, it assumes that like a string contains binary information. You have to declare them. You have to declare every variable that you use inside the function in the dog block above. Yes, uh, yes. And to help with that, uh, you can use um, regular expression for the variable name. Oh, okay. uh, so that simplifies things a little bit. If you're consistent with you know, how you name the variables. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that is where the performance gain comes from mainly. You know, I cannot make magic happen. Uh, it comes from somewhere is mainly because you switch from dynamic typing to static typing. That's what gives you uh, more speed. And in a lot of cases, you know, you're just working with just a single type, either integer or floating point. Uh, so the dynamic typing, you're losing a lot without gaining all that much in terms of ease of programming. Okay. okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.